Welcome to Ignition Healthcare St. Agnes Hospital Pre-Admission Joint Replacement Education. In preparation for your joint replacement surgery, we would like you to review the following presentation. This information is designed to provide important information for your admission, as well as to prepare you for discharge from the hospital. You have chosen an outstanding physician to perform your surgery at St. Agnes Hospital. We have assembled a special team of healthcare professionals who take great pride in ensuring you receive the best quality of care. We are committed to exceeding your expectations. Your surgeon will require you to attend a preoperative appointment at the PASS clinic. Pre-admission Surgical Services Department. At this appointment, you will be provided with an overview of the joint education process. The nurse will discuss the prevention of blood clots. The nurse will also update your medical information, discuss your medications, provide individual education, and answer any questions that you may have. You will also meet with a care manager who will discuss your home layout, discuss any equipment needs and any concerns that you may have for going home after surgery. The approximate appointment time in the PASS clinic is two hours. Please bring with you a list of your current medications, dosages, and any herbal or nutritional supplements that you take. If you would like to complete a power of attorney for healthcare, the care manager can help you complete this at your past clinic appointments. Please bring with you a list of addresses and phone numbers for the people that you intend to put on your document as your power of attorney for health care designee. The past clinic is located at St. Agnes Hospital on the first floor across from the Women's Imaging Department. You do not have to register for this appointment. You can come directly to the PASS clinic. Your surgeon will order lab work to be done prior to surgery. This will be done at your PASS clinic appointment. Included in the lab work is blood work, a nasal swab to test for staph and MRSA, you also may be required to provide a urine specimen. Reasons to have a joint replacement include osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and past injury to your joint. The knee is a hinge joint that goes between your femur or thigh bone and your tibia or shin bone. Your kneecap or patella floats on your thigh bone or femur. This joint allows for bending and straightening of your knee. It's held in place with ligaments. During a knee replacement surgery, the ends of the bones are replaced. The kneecap may also be replaced depending on the condition of your kneecap. Following this surgery, you will also be required to follow certain knee precautions for a set period of time to prevent any injury to your new joint. Specific precautions will be reviewed later in this presentation. The hip is a ball and socket joint lined with a synovial membrane. This joint allows your hip to move in three directions, forward, to the back, and to the side. The hip implant is a four-piece unit. Your joint replacement will include the replacement of a new socket, a polyethylene liner, which takes the place of cartilage to let your joint glide, the ball, which is called the femoral head, and the hip implant. Each patient requires different sizes. There is no prepackaged primary hip replacement. Your joint will be unique to you. In a hip replacement surgery, both the ball and socket are replaced. You may have certain hip precautions that your physician recommends, and this will be discussed further with you 
at your past clinic appointment. Prior to surgery, your physician will require you to have lab work testing performed. We will also have you sign certain required paperwork prior to surgery. You will be given instructions not to eat or drink after midnight the night prior to surgery. This includes no ice chips, water, gum, candy. There may be specific medications that you will be required to take on the day of surgery with a tiny sip of water. The past clinic nurse will discuss your medications with you prior to surgery and discuss which medications should be specifically taken on the day of surgery and if any of your medications need to be stopped prior to surgery. Please discuss any herbal supplements or nutritional supplements that you are taking with your physician. We usually recommend that any supplements are stopped about one week prior to surgery as many of them may cause blood thinning tendencies. We also require that you do not shave your legs or use any hair removal products and do not cut your toenails for one week prior to surgery. This is the main St. Agnes Hospital entrance that you will be using on the day of surgery. If you have Medicare insurance, you may be asked to stop at hospital registration on the day of surgery to sign paperwork. To make sure that you are properly prepared for your hospital admission, we have provided you with a list of items that you may want to remember to bring for your hospital stay. For example, we recommend rubber soled shoes or non-skid shoes. Your shoes must have a back to them. This ensures safety when you are doing physical therapy. For your comfort, please bring your dentures, hearing aids, or glasses, and bring cases to put them in. We recommend for physical therapy to wear loose-fitting, comfortable clothing, such as shorts or sweatpants. We do not want you to have anything with tight elastic on the bottom. We recommend bringing about two sets of clothing with you. Also bring your personal care products such as your toothbrush and deodorant. On the day of surgery, we also ask that you bring a list of your current medications that you're taking with you, including any herbs or supplements. With your list of current medications, please let us know the dosage as well as the time that you currently take them. On the day of surgery, you will be asked for the last date and time you took each of your medications. You will be given a phone number to call the day prior to surgery to find out your exact arrival time at St. Agnes Hospital. This number will be provided to you in your joint education binder and at your past clinic appointment. Other items that we may want you to bring with you include your walker or crutches if you already have them. If you don't already own a walker or crutches, this will be discussed in your past clinic appointment as how to obtain them. Your family can bring your walker or crutches to your room after surgery or even the following day so the therapy staff can size your equipment to make sure it is the right size for you. If you use a breathing device such as a CPAP machine, we ask that you clean it and bring it with you to use in the hospital. You will be provided a joint education binder at your surgeon's office and a breathing device provided in the past clinic. We ask that you bring those with you on the day of surgery. If you need additional equipment, we ask that you consider the Agnesian Health Shop for any of your medical equipment needs. For example, some of the equipment you may choose to have at home 
include bath chairs, over the toilet commodes, crutches, grab bars, canes, and more. We ask that you do not bring valuables with you on the day of surgery. While every safeguard is taken to protect your belongings, it is safer to keep them at home. You will not be required to show identification or insurance cards on the day of surgery, so please leave your wallet or purse at home. You may bring electronic equipment such as a cell phone, computer, or iPad to use in the hospital. We do have Wi-Fi. We ask that you do not take pictures, videos, or recordings for privacy reasons in the hospital. On the day of surgery, we ask that you do not wear toenail polish on your toes and do not eat or drink anything after midnight. On the day of surgery, you will check in at the surgery reception desk on the third floor. A nurse will take you to your preoperative room where you will change into a hospital gown complete any required paperwork. You will have an IV started. You will talk to your surgeon and anesthesiologist prior to surgery. Your family can remain with you until you go into the operating room. The time that it takes to get ready for surgery is about two hours. The surgery will last also approximately two hours. After surgery, you will be moved into your hospital bed to the recovery room where you are monitored closely by a nurse. Generally, people are in the recovery room for about one hour. During surgery, your family waits in the operating room waiting area. There are pagers available for family members to take to go get a cup of coffee or go to the cafeteria. After the recovery room, you will be transferred to the nursing unit where your family members can join you. You will have your own private room after surgery. There are refrigerators in the room where you may keep food that your family members bring from home if you wish. On the day of surgery, you will meet with your anesthesiologist. He or she will review your medical history and discuss the plan for keeping you comfortable during surgery. The majority of people having a joint replacement surgery choose to receive a spinal anesthetic. This keeps your surgical area completely numb. You will also receive medication through your IV so that you will not see, hear, or remember anything during your surgery. Another option that some patients choose is to receive a general anesthetic where you are completely asleep. The anesthesiologist will discuss your options and help you choose the best choice for you. Pain relief options after surgery are ordered by your surgeon. They may include oral pain medications, pain pills, IV pain medication, numbing medication injected into your joint during surgery. You will be asked to rate your pain on a pain scale of 0 to 10. 0 is no pain and 10 is the worst possible pain that you can imagine. This pain scale helps determine the level of medication that you require. It is important that your pain is controlled well so that you can actively participate in your physical therapy for a better outcome. You can be assured that you will not become addicted or overdose on medication. If you have concerns about taking pain medication after surgery, please discuss this with your surgeon. On the day of surgery, you may have a urinary catheter placed to drain your bladder. You will have IV fluids for hydration and a route to provide medication. You will be given special stockings to wear to help prevent blood clots. If you are having a knee replacement, you will have a special cooling device placed on your knee that helps 
with pain control and to prevent excessive swelling. For hip replacements, you will have a traditional ice pack placed at your surgical site. Physical therapy staff or nursing staff will help get you moving on the day of surgery. You will start on a medication to help prevent blood clots. You may have oxygen overnight also. For your safety, the nursing staff will check on you every hour during the day and every two hours during the night to make sure that your pain is adequately controlled, you're safe, and your needs are met. You can arrange with your nurse if you choose not to be disturbed to allow for intervals of rest and sleep. The first day after surgery, your pain will be decreased through the use of pain medication. You will be able to get out of bed with the help of physical therapy and nursing staff. You will be able to get up to a bedside commode or the bathroom with the help of a nurse and a walker. Physical therapy will begin at your bedside. As your mobility improves, you will go to the outpatient therapy gym for progressive walking and exercise. Occupational therapy also begins the day after surgery to help with bathing and getting dressed. After a total knee replacement surgery, we recommend not crossing your legs or stooping, avoid kneeling for long periods of time, and after surgery, do not place a pillow under your operative knee. This will not allow your knee to straighten completely which is very important. Physical therapy includes learning how to get in and out of a car, practicing going up and down stairs. The physical therapist will provide an exercise program tailored for you. Usually you will work with a physical therapist two times a day. The more you participate in your care, the better your outcome will be. You will be attending physical therapy two times a day where you will learn strengthening and motion exercises, walking, as well as discussing precautions for your hip or knee joint. We recommend that you drink plenty of fluids and eat well. This helps you heal faster. Take your pain medication as indicated by your physician and nursing staff. You may find it beneficial to take pain medication prior to physical therapy. The nursing staff will also be discussing deep breathing exercises, which assists in decreasing your risk of pneumonia while your activity is limited. Medications that you will receive after surgery include anticoagulants or blood thinners to prevent blood clots, antibiotics to prevent surgical site infection, pain management, and a bowel program. This is to prevent constipation, which is a common side effect of the anesthesia, pain medication, and because your activity is reduced. You will start on a liquid diet initially after surgery. Your diet will be advanced once the staff has determined that you are not nauseated and bowel function is returning. It is recommended that you continue to take over-the-counter stool softeners at home as a precaution against constipation. You are more at risk for developing blood clots because you are less active after surgery. Your blood is not circulating through your body as quickly as when you are up and moving frequently. The process of healing also involves clotting. Blood clots can cause very serious concerns and we, we will discuss this more in the next two slides. One complication from a blood clot is called a deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. This is a blood clot that can form in the deep veins of your legs. Symptoms may include very sore, swollen calf muscle. It may feel hard where the clot is located. Your leg may look red compared to your other leg, and your leg may feel warm to the touch. 
Sometimes people have all of these symptoms. Sometimes they may experience just one or two symptoms. Please let your nurse know if you are experiencing any of these symptoms. We ask that you monitor for these symptoms also at home and call your surgeon's office immediately if you notice any of these symptoms. If a blood clot travels to the lungs, this is called a pulmonary embolism. Symptoms of a pulmonary embolism include sudden onset of chest pain and shortness of breath. If you experience these symptoms, we recommend that you go to the emergency room immediately. Your surgeon and nursing staff will discuss many ways that we prevent blood clots. You will be asked to get out of bed and move around frequently after surgery so that your blood can circulate quickly through your body and help prevent blood clots. You will be provided exercises from the physical therapists that will assist in the prevention of blood clots. You will be wearing special stockings called compression stockings or TED hose and also may have sequential compression devices after surgery to help prevent blood clots. You will also be provided with medication to help prevent blood clots. This will be discussed further by your surgeon and the nursing staff. The expected length of stay after a joint replacement surgery is one to two days, which includes the day of surgery. You will be assigned a care manager who will speak with you the day after surgery and discuss your discharge plans and equipment needs. Your ability to walk and participate in activities of daily living, which include walking independently, getting dressed independently, and toileting on your own, will determine your discharge plan. This also will be discussed with the care manager at your past clinic appointment. We ask that you make modifications to your home prior to surgery that will help decrease your risk for falls or injury. The care manager will discuss these modifications with you prior to surgery. We hope that this presentation has better prepared you for your joint replacement surgery. We are happy that you have chosen St. Agnes Hospital as your provider of care. Thank you.